gentlemen, Gerald El Gallo Negro, Washington. For the three month title here in my home state, it means a lot. Can he finish it this time? No matter how high I get, it's just the beginning. And it's over! It's over! One name, one face, one title. And you guys are wild. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks trimmed with the silver. As a professional, he is perfect. 37 bouts, 37 victories, 36 of those coming by way of knockouts. Fighting and representing Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He is the reigning, defending WBC heavyweight champion of the world. He is the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. Ninth fight in Alabama, third here in Birmingham for Deontay Wilder. You see the love, you see the respect. Tuscaloosa about 45 minutes away. Deontay says about 30 minutes away the way he drives. And Wilder back here, and we'll have to keep a close eye on that right hand, Virgil Hunter. Round one underway. Wilder, even after breaking his hand and tearing a tendon in his bicep, as Washington with a nice jab opens things up, was able to still keep Chris Ariola at bay with a good, stiff jab. Washington coming out, and he's not showing any tentativeness. He shows that he's mean in business. He's determined and he's landed a couple of jabs. You can see Washington is a big man, 6'6", 239, so Wilder is used to looking way down on his opponents and having that that advantage. How different is it when you when you look at a guy straight in the eye, Virgil? I mean, talking for the the six foot seven crowd out there. Well, you know, you have your sparring partners in camp, so you get used to it, and so it's not much much of a difference right here for either man. It's a chant for USA, and then you hear a USC chant for Gerald Washington. It's quickly changed in his favor by the, the fans that he does have here. Both men are landing good jabs, and it looks like Washington, he came to fight tonight. And as we said, he's a big man, and anything can happen. Yeah, he came out right away, and I know you said earlier, Virgil, that you thought Washington had to try to actually hurt Wilder, like make a stand. I think him at least coming out and throwing that good sharp jab early at least made that much of a statement. They got crossed up. Mike Griffin cleans well, it up. At this point, he's letting Deontay know he's here. And I did say that at some point between one and two, he needs to hurt Deontay to let him know you just can't walk in on me. Tries to double up on a jab and throw a right hand. So, yeah, he has the respect of Wilder already. Moved him back a little. And he's punching well. Really good jab by both fighters, but we still haven't seen that right hand by Wilder. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to see if it's well. And laying back on that right hand. Washington presses the action. Forces Wilder back to the ropes. Well, so far he said it would be Bulldog and Poodle. I don't sense that <laughs> don't at the moment. It at no. Don't look like a poodle to me. <laughs> More Washington. like a bulldog. <laughs> Washington does need to keep his left hand up. Because Deontay does have that right. But in this kind of fight, it could be anybody's fight, particularly in that exchange, the last exchange. Is it fair to say that uh, Gerald Washington is winning this, this round? It's very fair to yeah. say that at this point. The wonder Washington, as he was on a campaign to get the fight with Wilder, if he just had a sense all along that he could compete and or win. And he has come in very calm, very determined, and has had a very good opening round in fighting for the heavyweight championship. We step away. Looks interesting so far. Back for round two. Wilder in Washington after this. 
Wilder with his trainer, former world champion, one of the greatest amateurs of all time, amateur boxers in the history of the game. That's Mark Breland. JD's there over the left shoulder of Deontay Wilder. And there's Gerald Washington, who had a very good round one. Again, Gerald Washington in the Navy for four years, then went to USC after playing some junior college football. And, you know, a lot of things go into the making of a fighter, Virgil Hunter, not just the military where he said, hey, look, we have a mission. I have to do my job so others can do their job. I have to do what I need to do. And then at USC, you remember, he was there in 2007, 2008. He said, I was facing the best athletes in the world. That was the heyday of Pete Carroll's unbelievable recruiting classes. And so he was, as a defensive end, facing top athletes day after day. Now, that didn't make him a better boxer doesn't all help him here but it does help him mentally get ready for this big moment well it does and the thing we have to look at is as i said earlier he could rise above to it he can rise to the occasion and take a step up and he's showing this so far and deontay is not complete yet he uh, has some flaws when he gets in exchanges he leaves himself open so this could uh, be interesting Gerald Washington has to continue with that jab, make Deontay Wilder feel, feel uncomfortable as he is at the moment. I think so. With that jab, he is fighting a big guy. Ooh, he gets caught with the hook walking in. He can't get careless. Washington rushing in like that because he's going to get caught either with that hook or straight right hat. We've seen Wilder start slow before. He's, he is usually fairly relaxed seen him almost to the point where you want to see him put his foot on the gas a little bit as we are right now yeah. not enough, but you're right well i think one thing we should notice is when washington is touching uh deontay with the jab he's moving him back mm -hmm. so that's something that uh, the viewers need to pay attention to he's moving him back that lets you know his force on him and he's jabbing correctly it's like a pipe isn't he? right there he's squaring his legs up if he shows him a jab and steps in behind it he can catch him with a right hand He's not stepping back. He's moving him back when he makes contact. His body, you can see the body, the physique. He is he looks just more solid. Mm -hmm. He will drive him back. Washington also, you could tell, again, coming in at 239 and not in the low 240s, as he said, that's what he was shooting for Virgil. And you can see, you know, right around his waist, that extra five pounds, I think it is indicative of his preparation. Right. And it's made him quicker. And I always felt that heavyweight should be at the proper fighting weight instead of carrying a lot of weight around. And he's showing that... That, that makes a difference tonight in this fight. He's got great wind, he's attacking, he's aggressive. And he's showing a very strong jab, something Wilder might not be used to right now at this stage in his career. And he's coming forward, making the fight. Yeah, good fight for Wilder is making him think in there. No easy fight. He's definitely thinking you can see. Closing him right. Good body shot. And he's getting more and more confident. Nice shot again. Washington. Washington is getting more comfortable. Yes. Yeah, he flashed that right hand to the body of Wilder, so he's able to try a little something new. Wilder. Figuring he's in for a fight. Again, we talked about Gerald Washington being the defensive end for USC. Both of these fighters with some football connections. Joined by former heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield. Evander, what do you think so far, early rounds? Well, you know, um, Dion is not throwing enough punches and, uh, and, and getting the guy into momentum. And uh, it comes to hard to shut him down and you keep letting him get so far out. Virgil, what would you say to Deontay Wilder? I would tell him to pick up his jab, start doubling it, start using more feints in and out. And uh, he has to catch up. I have uh, Washington up two rounds. That jab landed very nice. And he's got Deontay pulling back. What he's showing is Deontay's inexperience. Try to right hand and they open up. I tell you what, Washington looks most impressive when he's just throwing that jab yes. straight out. Is yes. it? Now right there, the physical strength of Washington is uh, coming into play at this point also. By stepping in uh, on Wilder and not paying attention to it right there, not respecting it. He could, he could uh, get Deontay at this point. Hustling up Deontay Wilder on the ropes and really trying to open up the repertoire, throwing right hands to the body as well. But the jab so far is what is stopping Wilder. Wilder wants to open up his attack, but that's a nice jab coming right off the shoulder from Gerald Washington. And it's disrupting his rhythm. 
That's his point. Wild right hand. And then he covers up. The more punt towards Gerald Washington in this round. I think he uh, he sees something, but at the same time, he has to be smart. He can't just rush in there. Deontay Wilder is known for that right hand, that, that step back, and he lands it really well. His timing is just perfect. So now Washington. For some reason, Washington went on the back foot, and I think he should continue to come forward. Now he's standing stationary. He should continue to attack. He does nice that. jab. That is, that is a straight, long right left jab as well by Washington. And he should continue to use it. If Deontay cannot defend it or do anything about it, he should continue to use it and you know, mix it up. First, I'll say, too, it has length. You know, because it does. Yeah, Wilder, of course, is obviously has wingspan, but I'm surprised by Washington's length of that jab. Exactly. And when you, again, when you look at Deontay, when he moves Deontay back from the jab, Deontay is not in a position to counter the jab. Deontay's not stepping back. He's allowing Washington to knock him back. So he's not in position to count. Champ Vander Holyfield said it right. He's giving him the momentum, giving Gerald Washington momentum, giving him space, giving him time to, to land these punches. And he's letting him rest. Deontay is uh, letting uh, Gerald rest. He seems confused. You see Deontay close his eyes right there when he punched. Cheryl Washington is 34 years old, again, with a late start in the Navy, playing college football. The clock is ticking. So he was stalking Deontay Wilder. He knows, hey, I'm 18-0-1, but I need to make money. I'd like to have a great career of my own. He gets a shot at the heavyweight title, and he has fought very well through three rounds here in Birmingham. In enemy territory. Ooh. Moves in, right hand to the body again. Active with the jab and now imposing his will on Deontay Wilder. We're going to keep it here. Let's look back at some of this. And Virgil, tell us what you're seeing because we're seeing certain things be very effective mm -hmm. for Gerald. Again, you saw the jab, not Deontay back. That's significant in a fight of this magnitude. And it's not allowing Deontay to counter him with his right hand. Deontay hasn't figured it out here. Here we get a real clear, clear, uh, clear picture of it. Not only to knock his knocks him back, but it twisted him around in the head. So it, he's having an effect on Deontay. Deontay hasn't figured it out yet. And he's getting to a point he's gonna have to go for a knockout. Really? Hmm. Let's go to Christine Leahy. Christine? Well, guys, Evander Holyfield and Larry Holmes, who are both here tonight, have both worn the WC Heavyweight Championship belt, but it has a new name now that it belongs to Deontay Wilder. He's named it Sophia from the color purple because she's a strong woman, and he dresses her in mink and leather. He told me he names everything after women, including the car that got here him today, a Mercedes Sprinter named Anna May because she's a nurturer <laughs> who always gets him to his destination safely, but... If the fight keeps going like it is, Gerald Washington might have a chance to rename that belt. Brian? And a few new cars, too. Evander, you've had a whole bunch of belts in your life. Have you ever given him a name? No, not no, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. It's kind of like uh, Lucille, right? Name, name your guitar, name your bass. Evander, did you get to see Larry Holmes? Uh, do you have a relationship with Larry? No, we, we made it. Okay. I would figure. Here in the house. Ernie Sanders is here as well as Wilder starts to throw. Ineffective though so far. Washington experienced enough to stay close. And every time they tie up, Washington is able to use that physical size and strength on Deontay. Washington is able to establish that distance, stay in the pocket. And you see their throwdown scoring app if you're scoring for us while you're watching the fight. So far, clean sweep. Watching on TV here on Fox. You all think it's three rounds to zero. Gerald Washington. It's very possible. Right, right, right. Yeah, we asked Gerald Washington about Wilder and what he thought. He said, look, he's got it all. He's terrific. He said, but this is about me. He goes, my timing, my mental game. He goes, I've got to be relaxed, but I've got to be aggressive. He said, I've got to learn to be comfortable when you're supposed to be uncomfortable. This is an uncomfortable situation. I would say he looks comfortable, Virgil, so far. 
He does, and he looks real assured. And he's, uh, again, the jab that he's using is very effective. He's got Deontay guessing. You can see Deontay thinking. He's not reacting. He's thinking, I don't think he expected this. Yeah, against Chris Ariola. That's a good body shot by Wilder. And again, he goes with the right hand to the body. Now he gets a little rough with Washington. Didn't need to do that. Against Chris Ariola, at his size, he was able to dictate the space, flash out a jab, and do the punishing even with one hand. He's not able to do that here. Deontay Wilder needs to take advantage of this round. I think Gerald Washington stepping back a little bit. Deontay should throw a little bit more. Put this round in the pocket. But Gerald Washington, I see a Gerald Washington thinking in there. I think he's waiting for that lazy jab to counter on top with that overhand right. I don't know if I'm right, but, um, but he's definitely thinking. Waiting for uh, Deontay Wilder to make a mistake. He's got a double double jab. Deontay Wilder, he's just throwing one lazy jab. Mm. Almost want to see more aggression out of Wilder. We, we haven't seen it as of yet. You know, again, there's a jab coming out from the other fighter that's difficult just to walk through. But he obviously has a more complete arsenal. But we haven't seen it yet. Gerald Washington doing a terrific job. Established himself early. Keeping him at distance. Getting physical just in all aspects. And he could be winning, I don't know, I guess all of these rounds could, could be doing that virtual. Well, it could be safe to say uh, we don't know the score, but he seems to be the one who's being the aggressor. He's being more assertive. And he's keeping Deontay confused. And we haven't seen Deontay land the right hand yet. That's a good point. Now, we were talking about that a lot because of the injury. I don't know if it's the injury or if it's just it hasn't presented itself. Well, I don't think he's seen this Gerald Washington before. If you look at all of Gerald's past fights, he has not shown this type of skill and ability and determination, and he's shown it tonight, and he's taking it to another level. See, JD's in the corner there. Vociferous there with Deontay Wilder. Mark Breland is there as well. Let me just ask you the stupid question then, Virgil. I know this is simplistic, but when Vladimir Klitschko had to face Tyson Fury, he was actually looking at a guy in the eyes, and he's used to looking at a much, you know, shorter guy at the very least. How much does that size, and we're talking about the jab and the culture of the jab in the right hand, how much does the size alone change the equation here for Deontay? Well, you can see the effect of it. Uh, because he didn't expect Washington coming. I hate to keep saying that, but this is true. It's very down. It's very simple what we're seeing here. Good jab. Mind made up. He's going to win. Just like right there. He just missed a big time. And he's made his mind up. He's going to go out on the shield. And he's made up his mind. He's going to win. So Deontay is in a tough fight. More than he expected, I believe. By the way, that's not a small thing that you just said, right? The jab and his mind made up that he's going to win. That'll take you a long way. That'll take you a long way when a man has his mind up made to win. He's, he's very difficult to beat, Abner, especially if the skill level is similar. Abner, how difficult is it to, like, change tactics or put your foot on the accelerator in the middle of, of a fight? Well, it's, it shouldn't be... Um Difficult for Deontay Wilder, who's been in this position before. I don't know what's uh, keeping him from doing so. Deontay Wilder, he's a, he's a great champion. He's a, he's a great fighter, and uh, he should definitely change the, the game plan. He should definitely... Oh, 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 He's on very unsteady words. He is. Wilder is talking to the crowd, saying, I told you. Let's see what happens here. Oh. Oh. Big left hand. Mike Griffin is getting closer. Washington is hit again. And this Griffin oh, stopping this no. fight. She's got me. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's Washington it's is hurt, wobbling around. And maybe that was the right call. Wow. There is wow. Wow. That changed fast. <laughs> Gerald Washington just gave him a great fight with Deontay Wilder, that right hand. That's the right hand we're looking for. That's the right hand he landed. And that's it. That's all she wrote. And I initially thought, fellas, that Griffin was, the referee was too close and was looking to stop it. But then seeing Washington trip over made me think otherwise. Evander, what did you think of that?
Well, uh, it, it shows you that if you if you're patient, you got confidence in your ability, and you can't you can't worry about it. If people get out there first. You know that he's gonna he's gonna make the mistake, and you capitalize on the mistake. And I tell you what, in the heavyweight landscape, how perfect is that? He was tested by a big man, and he answered it with one shot. That's that. Now it becomes not a, not a boring win, but an exhilarating win. Well, yes. We're going to take another look at that right hand when we come back. It was one. Thirty-seven KOs. Woo. We'll hear from Wilder when we come back.